Hello everyone, welcome to Wilkes Now. My name is Ian Patton. And I'm Shannon Slominski, and we will inform you about the latest campus news. Hello, my name is Michelle Jaramillo, and we'll talk about recent happenings in the world. Hi, I'm Sam Mullen. And I'm Julia Capitula, and we'll be providing you with this week's Sports Now update. Hello everyone, I'm Sean Papke, and I'll be giving you this week's weather forecast. But first, let's take a quick break with a PSA, and after that, Ian and Shannon will give you, you, your campus news. Hey there, I'm Lance Bass, and this is Chip. And for more than 100 years, American Humane has been protecting animals in times of crisis. And if you're like me, your pet means the world to you, and you want to keep them safe if disaster strikes. American Humane's first responders are always prepared to rescue animals in danger, but you can also help. To learn more about disaster planning and keeping your animals safe, please visit AmericanHumane.org. You may have noticed that Thursday, September 26th, that the Greenway was almost electric. That's because we were hosting a pep rally in preparation for homecoming as well, which we will touch on in a little bit. Brady Melowitz and I were there live at the pep rally Thursday. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Shannon Slominski with Wilkes Now. I'm here at tonight's pep rally before the homecoming game this Saturday. And I'm here with Victoria. How excited are you for this week's this weekend's homecoming game? Very excited. I'm excited to see it all come together after a long week of planning. And what a, what do you like most about the uh, homecoming pep rallies? I like seeing everyone come together, especially students and alumni, and that connection that is formed between them. And how will you be showing your school spirit this weekend at the homecoming game? Just getting out there, meeting new people, and uh, repping my colors. Thank you. And I'm here with? E. Alexis. E. How excited are you for this weekend's homecoming game? Um, I'm super excited. Super stoked to see the game, and honestly, super stoked to see who comes out as Hoko Royalty. <laughs> What would you say your favorite part about pep rallies are? Definitely the fact that everybody comes out. Um, seeing the Wilkes community and seeing a lot of the students come out and have food and just engage with each other, I think that's definitely my favorite part. And how will you be showing your school spirit this weekend? I will actually be a part of the marketing communications team and I will be going around asking people what they think the scores are for Poco game, um, and I'm also just going to be out there showing some Wilkes pride. So, all right, thank you very much. Of course, thank you, Jelania. Jelania, how excited are you for this weekend's uh, homecoming game? I'm really excited. It's my first like homecoming game at Wilkes because I'm a freshman, so I'm really excited to see how you guys do it here, and I'm excited to hopefully see a win by the guys. What would you say your favorite part about pep rallies are? Just being all together, the food, you know, the people, and just having fun, because that's what it's all about, like pep, having fun. And how would you be supporting Wilkes this homecoming game? I'm a cheerleader, so, you know, I'm going to be cheering on the sidelines, hope, and, you know, helping to get the guys pumped up for a win. What would you say your favorite cheer is? Hmm. Can it be a dance or does it have to be a cheer? It could either be a dance or a cheer. Seven Nation is my favorite dance because, you know, that's the one I could really like. Thank you. Praveed Siriwardhana of Wilkes Wrestling. What would you say you're most excited about for this weekend's game? Uh, I'm most excited about Wilkes football beating St. John Fisher and bringing it to them at our home stadium for homecoming and parents weekend. What would you say your favorite part about pep rallies are? How all the sports teams get together and how everyone just comes and cherishes time together as a school, but also an athletic staff and facility. How would you be supporting Wilkes this weekend? I'll be wearing my Wilkes Wrestling merch and uh, being the loudest person in the student section. Thank you. This has been Shannon Slominski from Wilkes Now. Back to the studio. 
That was such a great way to kick off the homecoming festivities. Also, over the past weekend, Wilkes welcomed in all those from the past, as well as their families. Alumni from all years were invited to return to campus to have fun, celebrate, and catch up. For an on-the-scene look, here's Josh Garced and Julia Capitula. Hi, my name is Julia Capitula, and today I'm here at Wilkes University's homecoming game. We're competing against St. John Fisher University, and we have a lot going on on campus today. It is family weekend, so there's lots of tailgating, lots of people, and lots of fun. And Amelia and Maya, what year are you guys both? I'm a senior. I'm also a senior. All right, and these are both the captains of the dance team. Now, how long have you guys been preparing for Wilkes Homecoming? So we have our tryouts the second week of school after club day. So it's been like three or four weeks that we've been preparing. It's a quick turnaround, but we made it work. All right, that's great. And how do you feel after having your first performance? We feel great. I think we did really well, and the crowd was really loud, so that's always awesome to hear as well. All right, thank you so much. All right, the stands are packed today, filled with fans, colonels, alumni, parents. We have a nice booth put together by student government with lots of events for family and children here. Lots of St. John Fisher parents came out to watch the game as well. The away stands are also packed. Overall, just a lot happening at Ralston today. All right, today I'm here with Matt, an alum, and what year did you graduate? I graduated in 2002. All right, and what were you involved with on campus? I was involved in a lot. I was on the football team. Uh, I was a captain in 2001. Um, I was on the programming board. I was in inter campus interface. Um, obviously, some of the business cl clubs and, and things like that, and tried to be involved in everything. Wow, that's great. And now, what brings you back to Wilkes? Well, I'm the historian of our Alumni Association Board of Directors, and it's homecoming. Um, and I've been trying to have a, a lot closer of a relationship with the football team this year. So I came down yesterday, spent some time with the team. I actually brought my boys, my kids with me today. They're out there, water boys today. And I just wanted to soak up everything that homecoming is. That's great. Thank you so much. All right, Nikki, what does it mean to you to be nominated for homecoming royalty? I think it means everything to me. Starting out at Wilkes, I was really nervous and timid, and being a part of so many things helped me come out of my shell. So I'm happy to round out my senior year as being a part of Homecoming Royalty. All right, and now what do you do around campus that made people want to nominate you? Um, I pride myself over being very active on campus. I'm a part of a lot of clubs and organizations. To name a few, I'm a Bonner leader. I'm a part of the Honors and Scholars program on campus, and I'm currently a Guthrie Scholar. So right now I'm not on campus. I'm doing my internship, but I'm excited to round out the year back on campus and graduate in May. All right, that's amazing, Nikki. Thank you so much. All right, I'm here with homecoming royalty, Nikki Dewar. And Nikki, what were you feeling right before they announced the winner? I was super anxious. I honestly didn't think I was going to get it, so I was really anxious but excited. All right, and how do you feel being crowned homecoming royalty? I'm really excited. Wilkes is my home, so it means a lot to me. All right, thank you so much, Nikki. All right, Shiv, we're here with Campus Celebrity. How are you feeling right before they announced the winner? So, Julia, it was a pretty marvelous experience, uh, and it was unique because in India we don't have homecoming stuff, as of I know. But, uh, no, it was a marvelous experience. I wasn't, like, anxious, but I was like, okay, let's go. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens because if the people nominated me and voted for me, I'm sure I'll, go, I'll be there. All right. And Wilkes Grace, I was there. So, thank you, Wilkes. That's great. And now, how do you feel after being crowned? Oh, it feels marvelous, and I still feel like Shiv, so it's pretty good. I, I, st I still have my friends, and it's good. I'm the king, but I'm still friends with all. That's great. Thank you so much, Shiv. Congratulations. Thanks, Josh and Julia. Come join the WAE for a free, yes, I said free, rock climbing class in the McHale Athletic Center on Monday and Tuesdays from 6 to 8 p.m. No signups or experience is required. If you have any questions, please email benjamin.campbell at wilkes.edu. Adulting 101 should be a required class for all majors, but for those interested, there will be an instructional presentation on credit and credit cards on October 15th. The event is RSVP only, and the link to sign up can be found on today.wilkes.edu. For any questions, please contact matt.davidheiser at wilkes.edu. Do you love coffee as much as I do? 
Well, the Office of Diversity Initiatives is hosting a Costa Rica-themed coffee hour on October 2nd from 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. at the <clears throat> Sabbath Lounge. Come learn about Costa Rica and ecotourism with Dr. Andy Miller. There will be a small activities for students to participate that resembles the Costa Rican culture. Coffee, tea, and a small dessert will be provided. This event is RSVP. The Bonner Leader Program is partnering with the Wilkes-Barre Children's Service Center to offer a free Narcan training here on campus. The deadline to register is October 14th, but the class will be held on November 15th. More information, plus a link to sign up, can be found on today.wilkes.edu. The Beacon is our campus newspaper, written weekly by students, for students, faculty, and anyone who may be interested. Here to tell you about it is Anna Beckham. Hello, my name is Anna Beckham, and welcome to this week's Beacon Briefs. The Honor Program is hosting their second annual thrift store this semester. You can donate your clothing in the Honors office and start to 59 prior to October 22nd or bring them to the clothing swap event October 22nd. WAE Wilkes Adventure Education is hosting free rock climbing in the MAC every Monday and Tuesdays from 6 to 8 p.m. Everyone, everyone's welcome, no experience or signups needed. For more information, contact Benjamin Campbell at wilkes.edu. Need some credit help? Go RSVP for Professor Scott Scammer's Adulting 101 workshop, focused on managing credit and credit cards. The event is being held in Sims 231 on October 15th from 11 to 12 p.m. For more information, contact Matt David Heiser at wilkes.edu. Tomorrow, Wednesday, October 2nd at 7 p.m., Lucas Patrick Reed will be defending his dissertation, a case study exploring an international school's change to standards-based grading, to the College of Health and Education and the Doctoral Dep Department. The presentation portion of this event will be held remotely and open to observers, students from the College of Health and Education, university faculty, and candidate invites. Thanks for tuning in to this Beacon Briefs. Make sure to pick up a copy of the Beacon on campus or check it out online at thewilkesbeacon.com. Let's send it back to the studio. Welcome back to Wills Now. I am MJ and we'll talk about the national news. A missed gusty winds Hurricane Helen has caused more than 80 deaths in five states in the southeastern United States. This hurricane reached the United States as a Category 4 and it's currently a post-tropical cyclone. It has generated torrential rains and hurricane force winds that have devastated part of North Carolina, one of the states most affected by this cyclone. Authorities has displaced thousands of affected families and begun restoration works on the many flood and destroyed houses and a street full of debris. A raging fire has prompted evacuation near Atlanta due to a plan. The Rockdale County Emergency Management Agency has issued a shelter-in-place order due to large plumes of black smoke billowing from the area. The blaze began when a malfunction in the sprinklers at the facility caused the water to react with the chemical and spark the fire. Rockdale County Fire Chief Marion McDaniel said at a news conference, the local government ordered the evacuation of the area around the factory and asked residents to take shelter and keep their windows closed and air conditioners off because, according to the quality studies, chlorine has been detected in the air emitted since the explosion. According to authorities, no victims have been reported. A man and his dog managed to save themselves from drowning after their sails boat sank. This happened in Florida when the men's boat was affected by the severe weather conditions caused by Hurricane Helena. The United States Coast War Air Station rescued them after the sail boat they were traveling on began to sink 25 miles off Sunnyvale Island. 
after receiving an emergency signal, the Coast Guard deployed an air rescue team that managed to local and save the man and his pet, who were in imminent danger. Both were taken to dry land where they received medical attention. The beloved British actress Maggie Smith passed away this past Friday at the age of 89, as announced by her family. Her sons Toby Stephens and Chris Larkin has been responsible for reporting her death and this statement. It is with great sadness that we have to announce the death of Maggie Smith. The winner of two Oscars will be remembered by her fans and friends for playing Professor McNogable and Harry Potter and the Counters of Downtown Abbey. Although these are her words most remembered by the general public, the truth and that Maggie Smith had extremely career as an actress. And last but not least, after many years, Disney reveals the official trailer for the highly anticipated series Wizards Beyond Waverly Place. In the trailer, audience get a sneak peek of the excited magic and reliable characters for the series' main cast, including David Henry and Janice Lee A. Brown, as well as the producer and guest star Selena Gomez. Wizard Bayon Waverly Place follows an adult, Justin Rousseau, who has chosen to lead a normal, mortal life with his family. The first two episodes will premiere on October 29th on Disney Channel. That is all the time we have for today. When we come back, Sam and Julia will give you the latest on this with Campus Sport. Prescription drug pricing points to corporate mountain. Freedom of the press is about your right to know. It's about your right to be informed. Today, no. there are real threats to press freedom and your right to know about the world around us. We must protect our right to know, no matter what kind of news is important That's to you. Question. Before it's too late, understand the threats. Protectpressfreedom.org. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> selfies nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Hi, I'm Sam Mullen. And I'm Julia Capitula. Now let's get into what happened this week in Wilkes Sports. The football team hosted St. John Fisher University for their homecoming game this past Saturday. Despite a rough first half, the team started to gain some momentum going into the third and fourth quarter. Senior quarterback Xavier Powell had six completions for 66 yards and added 23 rushing yards. Senior running back Elijah Jules led the team with 162 yards and two touchdowns for the day. With that, he is now in first place for rushing yards in Wilkes Internet era, which is from 2004 to present day. The Colonels were able to score 28 unanswered points, securing the 28-21 win. This Friday, the team will start conference play when they travel to Juniata College at 6 p.m. This past weekend, the women's soccer team had their first conference game at Susquehanna. Strong defense from both teams led to a final score of 0-0. Honorable mention to the first year, Delaney Yerrix for her two saves during the conference match. Women's soccer will be having their last regular season game tomorrow, October 2nd, at Marywood University. Their next conference game will be this Sunday at, sorry, this Saturday at Bregaworth against Moravian. Be sure to show your support at Ralston. The men's tennis team completed in the ITA Division III Men's Southeast Regional Championship at the University of Mary Washington. On the second day of competition, doubles partners senior Nathaniel Wraith and sophomore Sebastian Sylvester won 6-4 against Marymount University in the Constellation Round of 16. In the singles, Sylvester won 8-2 in the Constellation Round of 32 against Bridgewater College. Both of the men's and women's tennis teams will host Rutgers Camden at 11 a.m. and Elizabethtown College at 3 p.m. on Saturday. The women's volleyball team secured the win against Newman University last week, going neck-and-neck neck until the final set. 
Senior Jenna Barron had 13 kills, 6 aces, and 3 blocks. Sophomore Ava Wallers had 8 kills and 3 blocks. Women's Volleyball has two upcoming conference games, one on Friday at Susquehanna and another on Saturday at Elizabethtown. Best of luck to the Colonels. The men's golf team beat Missouri University 332-346 to on Saturday. Graduate student Cole Jungworth led the team with earning medalist honors, shooting a round low 75. Junior Matthew, Matthew Carlson got a new season best 79. The team will host the University of Scranton on Saturday at 1 p.m. On the women's side, the team faced crosstown rival Kings College and Marywood University this past Saturday. Against Kings, sophomore Kayleen McCants scored 73, setting a new program record. Senior Molly Cobart also recorded a new personal low, 92. The Colonels are back on the course on Sunday, October 6, when they host Minnesota University and FDU Florham at 1 p.m. The men's cross-country team finished 7th out of 18 teams this past weekend at the Lock Haven Invitational Tournament. Shout out to another first-year student, Aiden Graff, for leading the Colonels in the 8-kilometer race. Graff, Caleb Edwards, and Jack Thompson all finished in the top 25 for the tournament. Last week, Steven Yukoski sat down with baseball coach Mike Guy to talk about his time at Wilkes and his plans for the upcoming season. Let's see what he had to say. Thank you. Joining me today is Wilkes University's current head coach of the baseball team, Mike Guy. Coach, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having us in. Absolutely. So first question, how long have you been at Wilkes? I've been here going on my second season. And then where were you coaching prior to coming to the university? The last 11 years I was at University of Scranton uh, coaching in the same conference, the Landmark Conference. Do you have any other experience uh, aside from being a head coach? Um, associate head coach, assistant coach, um, played in college and then coach a local travel team as well. Where'd you play at in college? Played at Salem Community College in South Jersey and then uh, went to my four-year college at University of Maryland Eastern Shore down by Ocean City, Maryland. Cool, so you certainly have a lot of experience before coming here and that leads to the question, why did you decide to come to coach for Wilkes University? Uh, really like the, the majors that were offered here. I think Wilkes provides you know, a number of interesting majors as well as uh, the master's programs. Um, being local from Scranton, uh, I've been always familiar with Wilkes and uh, their sports programs. Thought this was a really good place to recruit student athletes with the variety of majors and the great facilities that we have at Wilkes. We certainly do have a lot of majors here at Wilkes and I know the Communication Studies Department just recently went under a change of our own but you mentioned Scranton earlier and how we're in the same conference with Scranton and Wilkes. How'd you feel about our season in the Landmark uh, last season? First year, pretty good. Um, you know, would have liked to have won the championship, but uh, overall we went over 500. Uh, we were very familiar with the Landmark Conference as a lot of the teams we might have played out of conference in years prior. And then coaching at Scranton, knowing those different programs in the Landmark Conference. I think it gave us a little bit of a head start getting involved in the Landmark. Absolutely. How important do you think it was going 500 for the younger guys on the team? I think it was really important. I think we were really, um, really a young team last year. We uh, graduated five seniors uh, on the team, but we have a majority of the guys coming back this year. And we had, you know, whether they were freshmen, sophomores, or juniors, they all played significant roles and with the incoming freshman class as well. I think we're used to the conference, the setup now. We know the different styles of play that each team has. Some teams are, uh, you know, trying to out hit you. Other teams are trying to outrun you. Some teams have power arms. Some teams have, you know, kind of more of a crafty righty or a crafty lefty. Um, so just being more familiar with the style of play of each of the landmark conference teams will definitely help us out this year. You mentioned some of those incoming freshmen, which by the way, Wilkes University is having their biggest incoming freshman class in nearly a decade. How do you feel that past season had an influence on recruiting? Um, 
I think the for three or four weeks we're top 25 in the country, um, recognized by the uh, NCAA. So that certainly helped with recruiting when we were doing really well in the beginning of the season. Um, and I think the freshmen coming in, when they saw the facilities, they saw the majors, um, they met the players, they met the coaching staff. Um, I think it was a really good recruiting year for our freshman class coming in, especially with the success that we had in our first year. Absolutely. Do you expect the team to see those top 25 rankings again? And if so, do you have a sense of how often we can be, you know, in that position? I hope every year. <laughs> I hope we uh, win the landmark every year. Uh, ultimate goal is to make a regional run, uh, postseason run, hopefully, you know, get to a World Series and give ourselves a chance to uh, compete for a national title. Um, comes with a lot of hard work and sacrifice, uh, especially being a Division Three athlete. There's no money involved. There's no NIL deals involved. We're not really sponsored by anybody. Um, guys who come here are, you know, first a student, second an athlete. Um, but they have a true passion for the game and there's no uh, extrinsic rewards that they're receiving for playing the sport. It's all intrinsic and a lot of self-motivation. Absolutely. You, you mentioned the World Series a little bit. How do you think a team, a local team like Misericordia going on such a run, how does that affect our guys? Uh, I think it really inspires them because they're 15 minutes down the road and if they can do it, why can't we do it? I know a lot of our guys know a lot of the Misericordia guys as well, whether they played with them in high school or they played against them in college. Uh, some of them play with some of the Misericordia players in collegiate leagues, and uh, Coach Egbert over there for Misericordia has done a phenomenal job the last 15 years, um, 20 years that he's been there, and we're trying to do the same thing here at Wilkes, and um, hopefully we get a chance to take that title away from Misericordia this year and bring it back to Wilkes. I hope so too. So just to wrap it up, last question, what is your favorite memory here at Wilkes? My favorite memory would be when we played Catholic um, in the eighth inning. We were down by four runs and we had an 11 run inning. Um, so Catholic was another top 25 team in the country, went to regionals. We came back and we won that game by uh, six runs that day, but it was the biggest inning we had. It was at home, it was in front of our uh, fans, and it was against a conference opponent, which was one of the best innings I've seen, you know, coaching collegiately uh, against one of our in-conference opponents. Absolutely, well, here's to more memories for this season and any more upcoming seasons. Thank you so much again for joining me, Coach. Let's send it back to sports now. Thanks, Stephen. That's all of the time we have today. When we come back, Sean is going to give you the rundown on this week's weather forecast. Stay tuned. At Social Security, we are always thinking of ways to save you time and make things easier. That's why we created My Social Security. A My Social Security account allows you to access your earnings history and benefits information, request a replacement Social Security card, get a proof of income letter, estimate and apply for benefits, and more. Save time. Go online. Open a My Social Security account at ssa.gov slash my account. Social Security. Securing today and tomorrow. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. I had a pretty normal mom life. Everything was pretty good. And we just had a new baby, and then all of a sudden she's on life support and fighting for her life. They told me my only chance was a heart transplant. And the American Heart Association helped make that possible. Their research helped save me. To learn more about how the American Heart Association is saving lives, go to helpheart.org. Hello everyone, I'm Sean Papke and let's get right into the weather forecast this week. So right now outside, it's looking pretty sunny, pretty decent. It's a little cooler, but that's what you'd expect from the 1st of October. But let's take a closer look. So cur currently it's 68 outside. It's partly sunny. It's going to be a calm day with some moderately, moderately cool early fall temperatures. Um, we will see some showers 
maybe late into tonight, into tomorrow morning. The sunrise, 7.01 a.m., sunset at 6.46. Again, we're going to see a high of 74 and a low of 57. 3 to 6 percent chance of rain. Um, our humidity is going to be between 51 and 87 percent, and our winds 2 to 7 miles per hour. So looking ahead into the week, again, Tuesday, partly sunny with a high of 74 and a low of 57. Wednesday, we're going to see a chance of showers with a high of 69 and a low of 56. Thursday, mostly sunny with a high of 77 and a low of 55. Friday, mostly sunny with a high of 78 and a low of 54. Saturday, again, mostly sunny with a high of 73 and a low of 45. Sunday, sunny with a high of 69 and a low of 45. And Monday, we're going to see some rain showers with a high of 69 and a low of 54. So looking ahead at those rain showers, we're going to stay dry pretty much most of the week. But as you'll see, throughout Sunday, throughout Monday, that storm is going to come right through. We're going to get the tail end of that. Tuesday into Wednesday, we're going to get some scattered showers, nothing too severe. Looking at the temperatures, we're going to stay fairly consistent within the 50s, 60s, and 70s, which is about what you'd expect for early October. We're going to see that fall conditions, maybe even see the leaves changing soon within the next week or two. So again, looking ahead, showers will appear early into the week. We're going to get cleared up again throughout the middle of the week and then towards the end of the weekend and into next week, we're going to see rain showers again. The temperatures will remain consistent. Again, highs of 60s and 70s. The lows will be a bit cooler, maybe even sweatshirt weather for some of you. Um, and again, slowly we're going to move closer and closer to that more fall, cool, crisp weather. That's all I've got today. Back to Ian and Shannon in the studio. Thanks, Sean. Well, that's all the time we have for today. As a reminder, you can watch us live every other Tuesday on Service Electric Channel 97 at noon. Also, check out our YouTube channel for the latest episodes of the show and more. In case you missed it, our broadcast re-airs every weeknight at 7.30 p.m. From all of us here at Wilkes Now, have a great week.